In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the bushings on the power steering rack of this Toyota 4Runner. That's the sleeve on the passenger side and the two Preston ones, which actually these are split, so they're a lot easier to install than the factory ones on the center and the driver's side. Let's get started. Before we start disassembling anything, I'm going to tie off the steering wheel so it doesn't spin around. We're going to have the steering shaft disconnected, so it's important to keep the steering wheel from making a bunch of turns. It'll damage the clock spring. I like to use the seat belt because it's already here, but if you want to use a bungee cord or anything else, go ahead and just once you uh, put it in here, buckle it. Might have to move the seat forward a little. With it buckled, just pull the seat back so it holds it nice and sturdy. Let's remove the wheel. Typically, you'll have a 21 millimeter lug nut, but these are not factory wheels. So for me, I'm gonna use a 19 millimeter. Regardless of your size, remove all six of your lug nuts and then we'll remove the wheel. Now that we have the wheel off, let's loosen up the jam nut that locks in the inner with the outer tie rods. I'm using an adjustable wrench because I don't have a large enough wrench to uh, fit over this. My tie rods are somewhat new, so this breaks free easily. You don't have to remove it all the way, just break it free so you can take the outer tie rod off the inner. Now let's remove the cotter pin off of the end of the tie rod on the knuckle side. If your cotter pin is not new, a lot of times they get rusted in here. So you may have to cut it off and then hammer a socket over it. It'll uh, just break the cotter pin loose that way. I'm gonna use a 22 millimeter socket on this. This tie rod has been replaced, so yours might be a different size mounting nut. But whatever it is, take it off. I'm gonna leave it on here just a couple threads so that as we hammer the knuckle here to break the stud free, it doesn't fall down. There we go, that popped free. Remove the nut, pull the tie rod off, and now we want to take it off of the inner tie rod. The one thing you do want to pay attention to is the amount of turns that it takes to remove this one. Obviously you'll need an alignment still, but if you put it back the same amount of turns, you'll get closer to decent alignment so you can safely drive to your local alignment shop. I had 19 turns, of course for you that might be different. Whatever you had, memorize it or write it down somewhere. Now just do the same to the other side, take the outer tie rod off. Now underneath the vehicle, we'll disconnect the steering shaft. There are multiple ways of doing this. I like to disconnect the rag joint here. This is the one that has the damper built into it. You have a bolt up here that connects it to the top of the steering shaft. And then this one on the bottom, they're both 12 millimeter headed bolts. This one connects it to the steering rack. I'm going to start at the bottom, doesn't really matter where you start, but take them both off. There's one. If they're in poor condition, this one does seem rusty, but it's decent. If I clean it up, I'm going to reuse it. If yours is rotted, definitely replace it. And there's the top one. I'm going to take a pry bar now. Tap it from underneath here. Make sure you don't damage anything as you're hammering up, but basically you want to slide this whole joint up on the steering shaft. If yours doesn't come off with a pry bar and a hammer, it's probably because of rust. I'm going to use an air chisel and just gently try to vibrate it until it comes off of here. There we go. 
Now we have to unbolt the steering rack so we can pull it away so we can get to the lines. I'm going to start on the passenger side. There's a bracket that's held on with a 19 millimeter nut and a 19 millimeter bolt. Take both of these out. There's the bolt. And there's the nut. One thing I want to mention is as you pull this bracket off, sometimes you might need a pry bar for this, but these two shanks here are different sizes. The lower one that goes on the nut side is longer. The top one that goes, that gets the bolt put through it is shorter. So you want to make sure you put those back the right way. Otherwise, if you put the shorter one on the bottom, the nut will bottom out on the threads before it actually gets tightened. Next, we have a bolt that is kind of hidden. You can get it from the top here. You'll see the threads at the bottom. It's a 19 millimeter and uh, you'll need a swivel head long ratchet to get to it. It's pretty much the only way you'll get it. You'll have to go between the sway bar and the transmission pan. There we go. These are pretty tight, which is why I said you'll need a long, long ratchet. <laughs> okay. And once you have it broken free, sometimes you can switch to a shorter ratchet. This is, this is actually so loose that I can just probably take it out by hand. Yeah. There's the bolt. On the driver's side, you'll see a 22 millimeter nut. This is actually a bolt that goes all the way through the frame. You may or may not have to hold the head of it, which you can reach just on the other side right here. I'm gonna try not to, but if it starts spinning in place, I'll have to hold it with a 22 millimeter wrench. Okay, looks like mine stayed in place. The nut came off, that's perfect. Push the bolt through. There is a washer that sits here, so make sure you save that. Now the pry bar, gently try and pry this away. Make sure you don't bend your skid plate. Sometimes you can get into this bushing here where the uh, bolt comes in from up top. And just be careful what you're prying on. You don't want to damage other components that are in the way. And you're not going to be able to pull it off completely because, of course, the lines are still connected. But this is, this is why we're pulling it off so we can get to those lines. So as you can see, they're pretty jammed in there. So at this point, you can pull the steering rack back. Um, I'm going to want to get this bolt out of the steering rack. You can just reach up through here and, uh, and pull it out that way towards the front of the vehicle. And then this can move around, pull it back just enough. It'll come out of this bushing in the middle. I have some pieces of wood laying around here. These are going to be perfect for me to keep this spaced off of the frame. I'm going to put them in here and just stack them. This will keep it away so that we can get to these lines up here much easier. Now, yes, this is going to move around, but this is basically the only way we're going to be able to do it. Let's start with the top line. I recommend using a flare nut wrench because it grabs onto one extra side than an open-ended and you're less likely to strip out the fitting. This is a 17 millimeter uh, flare nut. Try to break it free. That broke free, that's great. Switch to an open-ended when you can. It'll be a lot easier to maneuver and position the wrench up in there. Now, now I'm gonna try and take this hose clamp off of the hose that goes to this top line because our line is spinning and I'm just gonna pop the hose off. Now, once I take the clamp off, before I completely remove the hose, I'm going to want to put a collection bucket underneath. I think I got the clamp off enough to where I can pry the hose off of this line now. Be very gentle if you have to do this. You don't want to damage the hose or the line really because we have to transfer it to the new power steering rack. And now that we got the clamp off of there, let's push the hose back. I'm using a pry bar, but I'm going to be very gentle. So now that the hose is off, we can spin this line off freely.
Okay, now I can spin it by hand. Some fluid may drip out of here as soon as this comes out. There it is. Now let's try and loosen up the other line. This one is significantly rustier, so hopefully it, it breaks free. And uh, I'm also using a 17 millimeter flare nut wrench on this one, just like we used on the other one. After working it for a little bit with some leverage, I was able to break the fitting free from the threads. However, the problem is the line is spinning with the fitting. It's hard to see because the whole rack is moving, but it is. And in order to save that line, we have to break it free from the fitting. Looking at it, for us, it might not happen. So, so just as a disclaimer, if ours breaks, we're gonna have to replace it. Hopefully yours doesn't. At this point, the line and the fitting here for the pressure side is completely seized. The threads are broken free, but the line is seized to the fitting. So I'm just gonna cut it off and then we will install a new line. When you cut it off, if you're using a reciprocating saw, just be careful. If you're using a hand saw, it'll take a little bit longer, but you have less of a chance of hitting other things. So whatever you're using, just be careful. So this is cut now. Obviously, if your line was not rusted, you would remove it from the fitting and leave it onto the vehicle. Like I said, for us, we had to do this. Now I can remove my wooden blocks. Now you can grab the steering rack and just find the angle that it wants to slide out at and slide it out. There it is. So I'm gonna start with pressing this bushing out. Doesn't matter which one you start with. I'm just gonna start this one. I have the steering rack secured on my vise, that way it doesn't move around. And I'm gonna use a ball joint press to press this out. If you have anything else that you think will work, just use that, but this is how I'm gonna do it. The first thing I wanna do is I'm just gonna try and peel off any of this remaining rubber here that is already pretty much ready to fall off. But this will give me a lot better of a visual as to what is happening. You'll see this flat area that is around the bushing where it gets pressed in. Because I'm using the ball joint press, I need a cup so that as I press the bushing out this way, it, this one can actually come out either way, it doesn't matter, but I'm gonna go this way. I need a cup here to receive the bushing that is getting pressed out. So make sure you clean the debris here so you can actually sit the cup flat and flush on it, otherwise it'll go at an angle. So I actually thought I had a cup that fits, I don't. So I'm using a 34 millimeter axle nut socket. As you can see, it fits perfectly on here. I'm gonna put the ball joint press over and the, uh, the stud of the press fits perfectly on this, the metal sleeve that's in there. So I'm just pressing directly on it. I'm aware that this is probably going to separate the bushing and it'll press the sleeve out and rip it off of the rubber. That's totally fine. At least that gives us more room to work with to remove the rest of the rubber. All right, let's just press this out. Oh, actually, that just pressed out the whole bushing, so that is perfect. There it is. As you can see, pretty poor condition. I do have some leftover rubber that's just stuck to the inside here. I do wanna scrape that off. I'm not gonna put the new bushing on with the debris still in here. So if yours comes out clean and there's no need to scrape any rubber off, that's fine. I'd say this looks pretty good to me. So now I'm gonna take a rag with some brake parts cleaner and just degrease the surface. If you have a lot of corrosion built up, you actually wanna sand it down with some fine sandpaper. Don't remove a lot of material. This is aluminum and you can easily remove too much. So just be careful. I would suggest using some maybe like 400 grit or a wire brush even that fits in here. But uh, definitely make sure it's nice and clean. Here's the new bushing. It's a three piece bushing, the two halves and the inner sleeve. This is a lot easier to install because you don't have to press it in and this is a stiffer bushing, so not only will it last longer, but you will have a tighter feeling steering because the rack won't move around as much. Having said that, you do want to put a little bit of silicone paste, obviously I'm not gonna put all that, but you do wanna lubricate this area a little bit for two reasons. One, it will be a lot easier to slide the new bushing in, and two, 
if it's lubricated, it'll actually last longer because it will not rub dry as it uh, moves around or tries to. This is a pretty tight fit. There we go. And once it slides in, give it a couple taps with a hammer and it should lock in. Now we'll just do the same thing on the back side here. Put a little bit of silicone paste on the bushing. The reason you want to use silicone paste is because it is not an oil-based lubricant and it will not damage this over time. Oil-based lubricants can swell this rubber up and uh, will damage it prematurely and then tap it in. Last thing is the sleeve that goes in the center, but you'll notice you'll be provided with two of them. They are for two different applications, so make sure that whichever bolt came out of here fits in whichever sleeve you need. Take a little bit of silicone paste, lubricate the center. That way, the sleeve, once you've figured out which one you need, can slide in a lot easier. I'm gonna use some pliers and press it in like this. There we go. Sometimes, using constant pressure is better than tapping it, especially in this case. Oh, looks like it pressed the other bushing out. It's not completely out though, so I can probably just squeeze it right back in. Yep. Just be gentle. You don't want to damage it. You just want it to uh, basically slide right back in. Perfect, clean up any excess grease that may have come out or debris that's sitting here. Now let's move on to the next one. Now to press this bushing out, you could do several things, basically. You can cut this sleeve off, the, the end of it with this washer so that you can get a cup to press on this part, or if you can get a cup that fits over this but still locks in to these areas of the steering rack, that would be ideal because we're gonna do the same thing we just did earlier and press out the center, preferably the whole bushing, and get it into this cup, or at least most of the way out of the steering rack and into here to hopefully remove it. I'm gonna use the ball joint press just like this and press on the center sleeve of it, just like we did before. Get this close, and I'm gonna make sure that this cup sits as even as possible as it, I just want it to be lined up basically. I don't want it to go crooked at an angle. That would make things kind of get jammed up. So at this point, I'm just going to start pressing this slowly. I'm going to pause if needed and assess the situation. I just want to make sure that it's coming out the way I want it to. Perfect. So it got pressed out with the uh, rubber on the outside. This is exactly what I wanted. It did not take a lot of pressure. The only downside is it's not completely out, but it's out most of the way. So there you go. You can take it out the rest of the way by hand. Just like the other one, I'm gonna clean up any leftover rubber that is stuck on here just from years of the bushing being on. Get it as clean as you can, clean it with brake parts cleaner and rag, lubricate it, and then I'll show you how to press the bushings in. I'm using a brass wire brush. Uh, I didn't want to use steel because I really don't need to dig into the surface. I'm just trying to get the leftover rubber off a little bit easier. It's a little stubborn, so make sure you clean it off. Once this is done, spray some brake parts cleaner in there and use a rag to clean the rest of it. Send the uh, rag through. This will kind of wipe off anything that is still left in there. Let's press the bushings in. Get a little silicone paste, it's a little much, so I'll spread it around in here just to uh, help the bushing slide in easier. Put the remaining silicone paste you have on your glove on the bushing, that way this can slide in easy as it uh, seats itself in there. And just like the other one, it's a very tight fit, so I'm gonna have to start it on one side, press it down and in, and once it is down and in, I'm gonna use a hammer to tap it in the rest of the way. Just like that. That's one. We'll do the same to the other half that goes in from this side. A little silicone paste on here. You don't need a lot of this. If you put too much, well, there is, it's difficult to put too much because it'll just 
get wiped off as you put it in, so it'll just basically go to waste. Good. Tap it in. So those two are seated, and now let's put the inner sleeve back in, and uh, this one is only one size fits all, basically, so uh, it wants to slide in, but I will lubricate it as well as in there just for ease of installation. Okay, slide this through. This one actually slid through a lot easier than the other one, but I'm gonna tap it in the rest of the way. The bushing's coming off on this side. All right, that looks good. With these two bushings installed, the third one will be put on once this is ready to be bolted up to the vehicle. So let's do that. Let's get it back on the car. This is optional, but I'm actually going to remove, well, not remove, I'm gonna lower this shield down on the back side here. I'm gonna leave it bolted onto the front, but if I just unbolt the two rear bolts, which is here and here, two 12 millimeter headed bolts, it's gonna allow me to slide the rack in a lot better without scraping it or damaging it. I'm actually gonna use a half inch socket just because my bolts are, well, slightly damaged and they're not even the original ones. Okay, that's one side and the other. Like I said, it's not gonna come off, but it will tilt out of our way. Now we have plenty of space to slide the new rack in without scraping it or damaging it. On the passenger side, it can rest on this stud here in the middle. I'm gonna line it up with this bushing. I don't wanna bolt it in yet, but I want it secured here. And uh, now if we put this shield back, it can actually rest on the shield as we maneuver everything else around. But removing this was just to get better access to install it. Resecure the shield. Make sure you snug up the hardware. Now let's put on the lower hose. Try to line it up the best you can. This might be a little bit difficult because as you can see the line and the rack are at two different angles. So try to angle it to line up the threads. That'll be the trickiest part of this process here. So one thing I wanna try is pushing this large bolt through and actually putting it into the steering rack. Although I don't wanna push the steering rack all the way and I wanna pull it out as far as it'll go because I'm hoping this bolt will actually help us line up the line and the rack the way they're meant to sit. So with that in, let's try again. Like I said, this will be the most challenging part. I can get my stubby wrench now. Okay, I'm pretty sure I got it started. It's threading on nice and smooth. Took a little bit, but like I said, the key here is to line it up perfectly. Otherwise the threads will never start. And once they do, this rack being aluminum, it is very important to not cross thread because it is actually easy to cross thread aluminum. And if you don't pay attention, you won't even know. Make sure that when you spin it like this, the line itself doesn't twist. I'm gonna hold it with a pry bar very gently. I don't wanna bend it or damage it in any way, but I just wanna prevent it from spinning so I can just spin the fitting, not the line with it. Okay, just give it a good snug here. Okay, perfect, just like that. Now we can put on the top fitting. The low pressure return hose, the top one, I just pulled out through the area where the axle goes through and I'm gonna slide my clamp on. You have to reuse the original clamp. If yours isn't good, you'll just have to uh, get yourself a new one. Slide it over the hose. Oh, there you go. Make sure it's far back enough to where you can slide the fitting on. The way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna slide the the fitting on and then thread it onto the power steering rack. Okay, that should be good for now. Let's slide the fitting on. Here's the fitting. 
I'm going to slide it onto the, uh, the hose. This might be a little tricky seeing that this is a brand new hose, so it's a little tighter than the original one that we took off. But make sure it's fully seated. Right here has this bevel. Make sure it goes on all the way until it hits that. That's how you know it's fully seated. Ugh. I'd say that's pretty good right there. Let's grab the clamp and you'll see that this right here where it bulges, that's the end of the fitting. This is the end of the hose. Line up the clamp right in the middle. Open, there we go. Right there, perfect. Again, if your clamp is weak or damaged, replace it. Bend the hose and put it back in here. Try not to get any debris in it. And now it should come out this side and it'll reach the power steering rack perfectly. Although I do have to push it in a little more. There we go. Slide it into its fitting at the top here and try to line up the, uh, the threads. This might be a little tricky and challenging because they have to line up perfectly, but with enough trial and error, it'll start. Start it by hand. Make sure you don't cross thread this. Grab a 17 millimeter wrench and tighten it up. Okay, that's bottomed out right there. Make sure you snug it up, not more than a quarter of a turn total. That's it right there, about a quarter of a turn after it bottomed out. At this point, I'm gonna put the steering shaft back on because we can still move the rack around, so it might be a little bit easier to do it now as opposed to later. I'm gonna grab a pry bar and pry right through the, uh, between the frame and the sway bar here. Just pry up on this, kind of hook it over. There we go, that's on. And at this point, all we have to do is just tap it back down. If your steering shaft was not as rusty, maybe at this point you could just grab it and pull it down. Unfortunately, that is not the case for me. Also, one more thing to note is before you actually go down on these splines, make sure that your steering rack is still centered, steering wheel is still straight. I know both of those are good because we have the steering wheel tied off and we just centered the steering rack and I can visually see that it's equal on both sides. So just double check all that. Again, if you're a couple teeth off, that's no big deal. The alignment will take care of that, but you just wanna make sure you're not a whole turn off. Take a hammer, gently tap it down. You can see this cutout here. That is where the bolt has to line up. That's why the cutout is here, so the bolt can actually slide through. If you, if you have it lined up with the splines, you cannot put the bolt in. Take a pry bar if the tapping doesn't work and just very gently pry it down right between the frame and the uh, steering uh, joint itself. Don't pry too hard, you don't wanna break anything. And maybe combine that with some taps of the hammer. You just want to kind of slide it down and over. I know it's engaged on the splines, but it's kind of stuck on the rust that's built up there. Now from the top, I'm gonna to set the pry bar at the top of the steering uh, shaft joint and tap it down from here because from the bottom, it's a little too rusty for me to be able to safely pull it down without destroying that rubber joint in there. I switched to a long air chisel bit. I'm hoping, I'm gonna go very gentle, but I'm hoping the vibrations will actually help push it down. Yep. Perfect. Now that we've pushed it back down from up top, I do still have a little bit left to go, but I can do this with a hammer. Just push it down. Some more taps. There we go. I'm trying to pull it down at the same time. Notice how it wants to spring back when I let go. So that tells me that it does slide and most likely it is now fully seated at this point because this is not going down anymore. So the way to know is let's just try to put the bolt in. If the bolt slides in, you know it's seated because if it wasn't, because if it wasn't, the bolt 
wouldn't slide in. Okay. And there you have it. Bolt slides in, threads on perfectly. So at this point, I know everything is still centered. I'm just gonna leave it in. I'm gonna put the top one in as well. I did put anti-seize on the bolt. I cleaned up the rust. If yours aren't rusty, then I guess you're better off. And if yours are rotted, actually, you definitely want to replace them because this is all that's holding the steering shaft together. So let's thread these on. Okay, top one's threading in perfectly. In order to double check this, I'm just gonna use a small quarter inch ratchet to ensure that the threads are going in nicely. And they are, I'm just gonna bottom it out like this and then we'll grab the torque wrench and torque it. I'll do the same to the bottom one. Yeah, this is all going in nice and smoothly, so that's perfect. Let's torque this. 26 foot-pounds is the torque for both of these. Doesn't matter which one you do first. I'm just gonna start at the bottom. That's one. And two. Now that we have the steering shaft connected, let's put the rack back in. I'm gonna start by putting in the center bolt because this centers everything up. So push it in and then drop the bolt down from up top. This one, you won't be able to see much of what's happening there. So you kind of have to feel for it. However, once it falls through, you should be able to smoothly thread it on and you'll see it poke out through the bottom once the uh, threads get in there and start uh, catching on. There we go, we'll just bottom that out. And this one does have a torque, but I will not be able to torque this because my torque wrench doesn't fit in there. So I will only be torquing these, just so you know. Now, let's push this large bolt through all the way. Remember, this had a washer and then the mounting nut. This was the 22 millimeter mounting nut. If this line is in the way, you can kind of bend it up just a little bit. It won't hurt anything, but you definitely would, but you're better off bending it up out of the way a little bit than rubbing your socket on it and potentially damaging it. Okay, this is on, not gonna tighten this yet. Let's put the other side on. Now let's put the bushing on the steering rack side right here where the bracket goes. I'm gonna use some silicone paste and just coat it on the inside a little bit. You don't have to put too much, spread it around. This will prevent moisture from building up here and rotting out the steering rack, but it'll also help it slide on a little bit easier. I'm also going to take some of the silicone paste and put it on the outside because once we put the sleeve or the bracket over this rubber sleeve, it'll actually help it slide on a whole lot easier if it's lubricated. Otherwise, we'll have to kind of push it in and it'll rub dry on the rubber and, well, it just takes more effort when you could uh, just put this on and make it easier. Slide it over just like this. Make sure it lines up with approximately where the bolts are and then just push the whole steering rack in. Now take this bracket and put it back on. Remember, the longer shank goes on the bottom where the stud is and the shorter one at the top where the bolt goes. You might have to move some, uh, pry this line up, pull the rack up a little bit, just move things around so it can fit and slide easily. But this is where the silicone paste starts uh, or comes in handy because there we go. Once you do get it lined up, you can just slide it on all the way with minimal effort. On the passenger side where the bracket is, slide in the bolt at the top, make sure it threads in. So that way it doesn't cross thread and the nut, both 19 millimeter in size, snug them up. Let's tighten up this side first. Start with the top bolt because you want the threads to catch on and line up. The bottom is already started being a stud, so it's easier to get it tight. If you tighten this one up first, the bracket will kind of bend backwards and the top threads will not line up. The torque for this is 123 foot-pounds, so I'm just gonna get these close. 22 millimeter for this one. Most of the time you won't have to hold the bolt, but if you do, just put a wrench on the backside, you'll have access to it right there. And now the 19 millimeter bolt that goes from the top. Again, I will not be torquing this one just because I don't have a torque wrench that fits in here. So I'm just gonna make it as tight as I can. 
I'd say that's pretty tight right there. I had some good leverage with this ratchet, so that's done. 96 foot pounds is the torque for this large through bolt here. Okay, looks like mine is spinning on the backside, so I'll have to put a wrench on it. I'm holding the bolt from the backside. Ninety-six, right there. Perfect. Let's move on to the bracket. One hundred and twenty-three for both of these, the nut and the bolt. That's one. No extension needed for that top one. And that's two. And technically, the bolt in the middle was also 123, but like I said, can't torque that one. Now before we install the tie rod, I like to put a little bit of anti-seize in the threads here, just because the climate this car lives in, it's very likely that these will seize together, so I want to avoid that. And now, take the tie rod and put it back the same amount of turns that it took to take it off. Now take the tie rod stud and line it up, put it through the knuckle, put your castle nut back on, let's bottom it out and torque it to 67 foot pounds. Sixty-seven foot pounds. That's it right there. And now to line up the slot of the cotter pin with the castle nut, just keep tightening. You don't want to loosen to do that. Looks like we're almost there. Give it a little extra. Perfect. Grab a new cotter pin, slide it through, and bend it over to lock it in. locked. Take your adjustable wrench, or if you have a wrench that's large enough to fit over here, tighten this up. There we go. A little extra. And now I'm going to bring it back so that the tie rod can sit even with the knuckle here. There we go, just like that. Let's get the wheels on. Get all six of your lug nuts on, bottom them out, and torque them to 76 foot-pounds. Seventy-six foot-pounds in a cross pattern. There you have it. Now it's time to fill the system. This is your power steering reservoir on the passenger side of the engine, right by the radiator. Take the cap off. You'll notice that right on the cap it says to use Dexron type automatic transmission fluid. Do not use power steering fluid for this. If you absolutely have to, you can, but flush it out later. This being a steel reservoir, it's a little bit difficult to see. So I'm just going to look from the top and fill it almost to the top, but not all the way, because otherwise it will spill as we bleed it. I'm going to use a funnel, that way I avoid making a mess. The system is not going to take a whole lot. I would uh, be surprised if it takes more than a whole quart to fill up, so just keep that in mind. Now that we have it almost full, I'm going to raise the vehicle up so the front wheels are slightly off the ground, and we're going to turn the steering wheel lock to lock, meaning all the way from one side to all the way to the other side. With the engine off, this will manually push the air out of the system and the fluid through, and we'll top it off as needed. Back inside the vehicle, let's undo the seat belt, pull it off the steering wheel, everything's safe now. Now like I said, turn the steering wheel lock to lock, meaning all the way to one side, 
in all the way to the other side and uh, this will bleed the system manually. Now we will do this with the engine on later, but I want to make sure that the air comes out with the engine off. Otherwise the power steering pump is going to suck in a lot of air, aerate the fluid and potentially damage the pump. Another thing to note here is this is exactly why I jacked up the vehicle. Well, mine's on the lift, so I just lifted it, but you want the front wheels off the ground so you can easily spin them. Otherwise you'll be fighting the pressure of the weight of the vehicle on the wheels, which, well, if you can make this easier, why not? I'm just gonna do this a few more times. Then we will go check the level of the fluid. Most likely it will have gone down and we'll add accordingly. The reservoir is completely empty now, so I'm just gonna add more fluid to it, bring it up to the top just like it was before. Okay, that's pretty full, so let's do the procedure again. I'm just gonna keep doing this until air stops coming out and fluid stops going down. That's when I know that manually I've done everything I could, so it's time to start the engine. Now that it's bled manually, top it off if it isn't already and turn on the engine and do the same exact thing. Just keep turning the steering wheel left and right all the way until air bubbles stop coming out. Then once it's time to cap it off because you're done, this is also your dipstick to check the level. On one side it'll say hot, that's where it will be when the fluid is hot, it does expand a little bit. And on the other side it's a cold fill. You can use either of them, but most likely if you already ran it, it'll be on the hot side. Make sure the fluid level is between the two ends of these marks. If it is, that's perfect. If it's too high, just take some out. If it's too low, well, add some. At that point, once you have it filled perfectly, cap it off, take it for a road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.